Okay, I wanted to do a video about this. I've got a BIPA van and I wanted to change this stereo from what looks like somebody's put in the past a single DIN conversion to a double DIN. Now, I searched the internet for ages and ages and ages and I could not find hardly anyone who's done anything video-wise about this. So, here we go. I'm going to do it. Tools that I need that I used to do this were Stanley knife, just a plain old flathead screwdriver, and this, which is a Torx bit, which I think was a T20. I'm not exactly sure. I think it was a T20. Let me just check. Yep, it was a T20. Okay, so let's do this. So first things first, make sure you've got the right kit. This kit is for uh, Nemo, uh, because there's a lot of variants of this van. There's a Nemo, the Freno, the Bipa, um, and this one is for a Nemo. It doesn't really matter, because they've all got the same dashboard. There is slight differences, but nothing much. This is the plate you should get. I put tape on here, some cloth tape to keep it quiet because they tend to squeak. And this is the pocket you get if you don't really use a uh, double din. And this is the double din adapter. Now, I'm going to be fitting a single din stereo today, but you could put a double din in this quite easily. Now, first things first, it's hard to see it. But you have four screws there's one there and there's two down there and there's one in there and they all look like this excuse the shaky camera this is a mobile phone i couldn't get my camera to fit in here they look like this so you've got to take those four screws out that's why i've got this tool because that i can, I can get in like that quite easily and pull it all out After you've done that, you can pull this out. It clips on the top, like that. There's a couple of clips there, like that. And there's the four mounting places I told you about. Well, two now, but you get my point. There was four, okay? Because I broke one, lol. This side still has it, has the other one. Okay, and it just clips out. This is an aftermarket version of it, but the aftermarket version and the OEM one look this shape and they fit exactly the same. So then you left this. Now you need to take this out then as well. So this just pulls out. And on this, this is the OEM one. What you need to do is see these clips back here. You need to save those because you need them for putting in the next one you don't need all of them because on these they come with two extra ones but you're not going to be using the two front ones you'll see why in a minute let me put that down by there right here comes the part that I could not find any information on well, obviously I've done it now so I'll show you what I mean to put a double din in there's your single and your double would be there that's in the way now you can see here where from manufacturing they've heat pressed this together like that using some heat pressing machine so this has to come out so this is a flathead screwdriver this is what i use to take it apart i push the screwdriver in there and in there to break that joint and then again in this side and in there to break that joint too they're only they're literally only pressed on with heat Excuse the shaky camera again. And then I worked my way around doing this all around till I cracked as many as I could. And then I worked down, I worked downwards and like that to get all of this loose. Once I got all that loose, I took this off. As you can see, it comes off in pretty decent size. Uh, it's not too bad. You can see where they've been heat pressed on in all the spots. You're left with that. <laughs> That depressed me. I thought that was the end of it, but no. <sighs> so, anyway, 
after that, as you can see, this is still in the way. Now this part is actually part of the dashboard. So what I done is I took a standing knife like this and I ran the standing knife from this edge here all the way up here and across here lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times until it went through. And I done the same for this side. A bit messy there, but I done that. Lots and lots and lots of times that it went through. And then I done the same here. This takes a while. It took me about 10, 15 minutes to do this, but it, it is worth it. Because what you get then is pop, this will come out and leave a massive hole in your dashboard. And you are like so scared. So anyway, this is the part that you need to remove. There you can see the line I cut. Cut the line there and the two lines are cut there. And you can see how that used to be in here. It used to be there, like that. Okay. So once you've taken that out, that's now history. You're left with an enormous hole in your dashboard. And I mean an enormous hole. It's, it's wow, it's huge. And it's so scary, but it's worth it. At the end of the day, this is the best way to do it. There is another problem. And if I bring it down like this, right now, this is nice and flush because I've already cut it. But if I show you that was there, it was originally there to hold the original frame up. So if I can bounce it there. So if you look, it ain't gonna fit. Now, I don't know if all of va the vans suffer from that, but I think most of them do. So what I did, I took a standing knife and I ran down there and I did the same trick across the front until that's gone. Don't worry about what these look like because you'll never see them again. This is, this is just to give space. So now it's flush so you can see it's smooth. Once you've done all of that, then go on to the part that you've bought. So you should in the pack have this, which is your top plate. I've put again, I've put some cloth tape on the top section here. You don't have to do this, but I've put tape there, top and bottom, to make sure that it doesn't make any squeaking noises. Now, as you can see now, because we've removed the front part of the original, the original housings supports which are here so let me put this for there so the original front supports are there and the back supports are there we no longer need the front supports because all we need now is the back supports because you can see it's shorter by quite a bit okay and you don't get those supports anymore so you need to fit then these they're easy to take off you just put a screwdriver underneath them and they literally slide off and once it slid, slid off, you can see now where, only just for see. You can see where there's like a groove that they sit over. And a groove on that side, which is slightly different shape so that you can't get it wrong. And there it goes onto the floor. Great stuff. <laughs> okay, so this now fits. Well, there's no light. See the holes back there? This fits on top. Like, like a saw. Like a saw. Right. So now, some of your hole is gone. <laughs> so it's looking better already. So it's opened up this shape to a full size. So it looks a bit bigger for a stereo. Obviously it is. So, make sure we are clamps are in the right spots here because these tend to move both of them do they're a pain let me do it with this hand so you can see they are a bit of a pain they tend to move by themselves when you're potching there's one there and there's one there now I've covered these ones up these are the original bottom ones they're no longer needed so you can cut you can cover those up no problem at all and not to worry about them because you're not going to need them anymore obviously you've flushed that off as well then take this this is the surround as you can see there are two 
there are two screw holes here and the surround itself is very big it's much bigger and again i put some cloth tape on there again you don't have to do that but i do it because it stops the rattling in the future because it's gonna rattle most likely and then you put this which is hard to show Let's see if i can get in here as you can see there's a little clip there it's not really a clip but it clicks in there like that and again hard to show clicks in there and now you've got the two screws to put in there That then looks like that. All right, give me a second, put the screws in and be back. So once you're done, this will be nice and firm, nice and strong. And if you look up here, you can't see the tape really, but no squeaking. It looks nice all the way back here. It looks nice to here. It just, it just looks lovely, you know? And I think all of these dipper van should have come with this. It's nice. All the way around, you can't tell. And you can see now where I cut away that thing, it actually doesn't get in the way of the stereo anymore. So that's pretty good. Screws are now in. Not that you can tell too much, there are. Screws are now in. So if you're going to fit a double DIN unit now, you're pretty much done. Obviously, you're going to have to get the wires out. I've got a lot of wires in this one because I've got an amplifier and aftermarket DAB unit I've got a few cables in here okay this is the like pocket that you get with it if you notice this pocket is a little different though it has a little ledge on the top but not on the bottom and a little seat now I think that's for fitting the standard DIN stereos and I needed it in this in this setup I did need it and that goes in there now, one second. Yeah, that, that goes in there. And then all the wires go on top. Let me just do that. Now, let me move the wires. There we are. And then that looks like that. On the inside. There is so much room in you now, it's unreal. Obviously, I got my stereo wires, my amp cables, and my DAB aerial. So, I, as I put in a DB aerial in this van. So, that's it, really. I'll, Take a little video now of it with the stereo connected. Show you how it overlooks. And I think this is a great mod. This is something most of the van owners should do because it opens so much up for you to have better stereos and it's just so good. So that's the stereo fitted. And it sits on top of the groove like that. And you can put your surround in. Obviously this varies from stereo to stereo so there's pretty much pointless me going over the whole details of doing stuff like this and then you can put your stereo on happy days it's done obviously i've got to turn it in but it's done that's it nice and simple you should be left off left over with a couple of parts you should have this and this, which was the centre part, if you remember. And this, which was the front, if you had an aftermarket. Or exactly the same if you had the OEM, just the stereo would be part of that. And this bit from the bottom. And you're done. And that's what you get after it. And as for it looking on the dashboard, it looks pretty good. Do I mean it doesn't look out of place? It's the same colour plastics. It's really hard to show you that it's... It fits nice, you know? It's worth the win. And after you're done, you can use this pocket for lots of things. Like keeping fake blue bulbs that you buy off eBay from China sellers. Really, China? Really? Fake blue bulbs. Why do you just dip standard bulbs in blue paint? Do you think we're going to notice when you switch them on and they burn the paint off? But there we are. Hmm. So you can store them in there because they're completely useless. Anyway, thank you for watching. I know this is a different video to what I normally do and I'm sorry for the camera being all done on my mobile phone. There was just no way I could get my main camera in here and I couldn't get into the fit. 
So I hope this has helped someone. If it does, leave a message in the comments. Let me know what you get on and how you get on with it. Because I'd be interested to know. I've done plenty more mods to this van and I could show you them all. But uh, that depends. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Yeah.